Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Man the Maker. Welcome to a new Let's Play series for Vagris the Riven Realms, a game which I had called Vagris for the past six months until I have just been corrected by the intro. What is the game? Post-apocalyptic fantasy RPG. The world has been torn asunder by the gods. Empires fell, have reformed, but times are dark, times are grim. And we, as the Vagris, lead a caravan betwixt the settlements that remain here. Things don't seem great. Interesting thing about this story, um, I believe it was created, the, the Riven Realm itself is a product of the D&D campaigns from the past 20 years of the developers of the game, that they all got together and after they played for so long, they had a enough of a world built that they decided to make this game. I think something like that. Maybe I'm completely wrong here, but that's, that's pretty awesome. I have only just played my first Dungeons and Dragons game. Now I finished a one shot uh, like two days ago or something. And um, really excited for the stories that are coming out of that. Really excited by this game, just generally. Crew Combat is only partially implemented. It is an early access. A demo is coming out very soon at the time of this recording. Um, so if you want to play the game, you'll have access to the demo very soon. But I'm hyped. Let's just go ahead and jump into the game, shall we? Nothing beside remains round the decay of that colossal wreck boundless and bare. The lone and level sands stretch far away from Ozymandias. Ah, yes. Avagros. What a profession. Daring and savvy. Always watching the horizon. Always looking for an opportunity. And of course, for what is best for his comitatus, eh? And you are you know a about too. Are you not? True, true, true. Many of your kind have I seen in my long life as a vagabond. Care to listen to a story about your exquisite occupation, good master? It is a tale of woe and terror, but it is also a tale that is true, as I have seen it with my own eyes. Yeah, I like his threads. I like his threads, I gotta say. And the, the fire effects... That's, that's really nice. I gotta say, that... That looks stunningly nice. Okay, so here we get the choice. We can do the kind of story intro to the game, or we can skip it and just go into this open world um, part, and we're just going to play the Pilgrims of the Wastelands. I don't know what, what the deal is. You are, good I, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Right? The tale is of a virus such as yourself, but one whose fate was cursed and wrought with ill fortune. Realize. Whoa. <laughs> Hold on a second. Maybe my... Head should go here. We, we don't know where the head is. We don't know where the head will remain. We can get it out at least out of the text. Ten years, maybe more. I was but a passenger, traveling rough roads and forgotten ways with this comitatus, south along the feet of the great mountains of the west. Hmm. Indeed. Let's start Pilgrims of the Wasteland and see what's going on here. This comitatus I speak of had fallen under hard times. Perhaps it was due to imperial harassment or unfortunate decisions, or simply bad luck. Irafons, saint of Rome, Irafons. does not always smile on us mere mortals. <laughs> oh, it does but not. However, it came to pass. Their coin was drying up, and their opportunities seemed few and far between. One of the last chances their Vagras saw was to travel to the remote town of Scrapney and spend their remaining funds to stock up on cheap... A classic plan. A classic this plan. ...to be sold for great profit over in the east and south. It wasn't a bad plan, truly. But it mm. was not without risks. But what is life without risks after all? Right. We have started here. Hold space. <laughs> Welcome to the Pilgrims of the Wasteland, a standalone story of Vagris the Riven Realms. It serves an introduction to the setting and also a tutorial to the game. It behooves you, and nary a game has behooved me in the past, and I take great pleasure to be behooved at this very moment in time by this particular game. It behooves you to read the tutorial text and follow the instructions to gain a better understanding. We'll do that. That can be clicked to the tutorial window, show which section is referring to. It is an open world game due to Pilgrims of the Wasteland being a tutorial. It progresses along a narrow guided path and beginning to open up only later. Very well. Hold that space. Here we are on the campaign map. Your Comatatis traveling company 
Always occupies a node and moves between nodes through paths. Yeah, we, we know this. We, we get it. We long paths, cost movement points. Great. Move to scrap heap. Six movement points. Let's carry on. Oh, we've hit a node. Having gone ahead of the column with a handful of scouts, you watch from a ridge as your comatatus slowly trudges along, making its way ponderously among dormant geysers and broken terrain. All around you, the hills smolder lazily in the perpetual twilight. Are you all right? Are you all right? Javik's voice resonates sympathy. Uh, that was not resonating sympathy. Are you all right? Javik's voice resonates sympathy as he appears next to you on the ridge. You nod slowly, but do not look at him. Your gaze lost in the distance, where ash cloaks the horizon and the towering mountains to the south and west. Turning to your Comez, you note his supportive smile. You and Javik have been traveling around the realms together for years now. There's no other person in the world who you trust more than you trust him, except, perhaps, yourself. I know you feel constrained, but I still feel like I said before. You made the right choice by leading us here. Time will tell, but I still have my doubts. Long shot? Eh, I don't know about that. There wasn't much of a choice, either this or returning my trading license and hanging myself. <laughs> okay, Grim. It has to work. I We cannot fail. Not like this. Thank you, but the last thing I read right now is a clumsy pep talk, even if it's well-meaning. <laughs> I'm gonna go with the grim choice here. Don't forget banditry. We can make serious coin waylaying travelers. Yavik's smile is mild, but you are used to his sarcastic humor. Unfortunately for many, this is not a very light-hearted matter. Highwaymen and brigands roam the wastelands, and foreboding wilderness between settlements and attacks are fairly common. Thus, travelers often band together for protection, which gave rise to the golden age of Comatati and Vagri. Seriously, though, there may have been little choice, but how you go about it matters much more than that, I think. We stick to the plan and see how it goes. Or how was the rest of the crew? I don't I, I, I'm, we're focused here. The plan. You talked your traveling company into this a few weeks ago, but with each step towards the western mountains, more and more of them started to have doubts, such as the way of the road, perhaps. The plan involves a desperate attempt at squeezing a low-selling price for metal bits out of an old contact of yours in the town of Scrap Heap, stocking up on said metal by spending the rest of your coin and bringing the cargo down along the molten tongue to Devon via Avernum and Ash. There's a shortage of metal in Devon, and you know several buyers who'd give a pretty price for your goods, if you can only make it there before many others with a similar cargo do. Such contacts are the boon of decades spent on the road. But even if Narbo, that villain, gave you an agreeable price in Scrap Heap, the road is not without its risks. Sneaking through the grap gap between the dead forest and the molten tongue is inviting disaster. So it's not a path many factory would take. And, of course... If this fails, you have utterly run out of alternatives. Alternatives, perhaps. Alternative is an alternative way to speak that word. Do you think Narba will help us out? The old scavenger was never famous for his goodwill. One can only hope. I haven't seen him in years, but we always did good business. He might not even be alive. If he's not willing, we must find a way to compel him. There's no telling what you would be capable of if it came to it. He has to help us out. He won't be able to pass the opportunity to make us indebted to him, even though the thought of selling out in such a way makes you feel dirty. We'll go with the compelling? No? No, no, no? No? Two? No? No? <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, you're the same. when the text is an event is highlighted in blue, it means you have found a codex entry. Click on the highlighted words. Ah, you want me to do things. The Dead Forest. The Codex is a collection of entries you find through your travels. Entries contain information about the world and its inhabitants. When you have unread entries, the crystal on the cover of the closed codex emanates light. There's a lot of reading in this game. Let it be known now that if that is not your cup of tea to be read to by such silky tones, then perhaps this is not uh, the Let's Play for you. And uh, if you don't enjoy reading on your own, you know, it not, might not be your game. But for me, I'm down. I like the sound of my own voice and um i'm very much into this kind of lore situation it's supplementary we don't need to read it very well we won't at this very moment um now i can say it these are dark times and call for desperate deeds but such thoughts make me really uncomfortable to be honest yavik rubs his 
chin absentmindedly. You've seen this expression of his too often not to realize he's using his sorcerer's talent to read his mind. Your mind, in fact. My mind. Get out of my head. You know the rules, man. Come on now. Apologies. Java quickly rubs his eyes and looks away briefly. You know how it is. It comes to me so naturally that sometimes I don't notice I'm doing it. Your thoughts were loud, Vagris. I actually have to block them, you see. After joining your Komatata six years ago, Yavik is proving to be an invaluable asset. Not only does he sense moods and thoughts around him, he's also able to subtly manipulate others when he focuses his inner energies. It comes very handy when doing business. Then there's his other perks. A few times you saw him shatter the minds of men and beasts who tried to kill him. Not a pretty sight, but a very effective deterrence. Yet, because he's not a trained sorcerer, at least not in the traditional sense, his abilities are sometimes difficult to control. You become accustomed, accustomed to his impromptu thought scans, while others find it less bearable to be around him. For this reason, he has kept his abilities a secret for many years overall, but you can't keep a secret such as this in the close-knit community of Akomatatis, especially not if you keep bursting minds and knowing things you shouldn't. So there are only a handful of your commas who put up with being near him for long. But even so, he hasn't probed your mind in years, certainly not on purpose, but neither by accident. Perhaps he's less in control now, and which suggests he's more on edge about this whole trip than he lets it show. Apology accepted. You manage a faint smile. Let us return to the others and push on. There's still a day's travel ahead of us. Or just make sure it does not happen again. Nah, we're cool, man. Come on. You go back to the comatatis. As we were coming up to the gates of Scrabble's gate, for this time for some hydration. Throats and scavengers, we could see the vast mountain ranges as shattered with thunder thar looming ominously over the horizon. Half shrouded in the gaseous vapors, belched forth by the volcanoes in the far west. My companions prepared to do their business in town as fast as they could, not wishing to tarry in this notorious place. Mm -hmm. Not at all. Hold that space bar. All right, onward to Scrap Heap. And what shall we find? At the foot of the ever-fuming mountains of the ancient dwarven kingdom lies Scrap Heap, the town of scavengers. This is an intense place. I love the art. I'm just going to say it now. I've seen a little bit. I dig it. I dig it very much. Is it oil painting-like? Is that what this is? I'm not. I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Debris and junk is piled into veritable hills, upon which the rickety homes of the decrepit inhabitants stand precariously. Ash lingers everywhere, and the sun is almost always absent from the twilight... Twilight? Twilight skies? Twilight skies. Deals are struck day and night over the precious metal scraps gathered in the ruins of nearby Dvendar Thar, while the Heap King oversees all from his dreaded tower. That's the Heap King up there, burning away brightly in the sky. Shady eyes and soot-covered faces watch from under ash-laden awnings. That is a great sentence. Shady eyes and soot-covered faces watch from under ash-laden awnings. Life is cheaper than iron here, as some say. We gotta track down Narbo. When a Comatatus enters a settlement, you can select from a variety of options, each on its separate pane. Revolving around resting, resupplying, and trading, you have the opportunity to initiate stories located in the settlement. This time, only the story pane is active. Okay. Story pane? Okay. You make your way to the Wraith Stash, a notorious watering hole tucked away in a small street just behind the imposing tower of the Heap King, but not quite under its immense shadow. Not many frequent the establishment, which makes it perfect for Narbo and his little operation of honest merchants. Apparently, the knave is not only alive, but has done well for himself in the past decade or so, taking only Yavik, I don't know, Javik, Yavik, I live in Germany and the J's confuse me these days. You leave the Comitatis to the care of Titus, your quartermaster. While you're done, gone, while you're gone negotiating, ashes flitting from the black sky as you cross the street and nod to the bouncer of the rate stash. You give him your sidearms quietly. Rules are rules, at least as long as they can enforce it. Yet they have the courtesy of allowing you to keep your dagger. And of course, they have no idea what Javik is capable of, should it come to a scuffle. Not that you expect such a thing, but with Narbo, one never knows. Though you've told your crew that him and you go way back, the entrepreneur is a capricious and manipulative man, with whom you did not part on the best of terms last time. Does he remember that? Surely. Could he be persuaded to take your proposal? Who knows? 
Bear's Puzzle. When you do a lot of reading like this, you get rather parched. I will proceed. Mm. Oh yes, hydration is the stuff of glory. Your eyes slowly adjust the dimness of the tavern's interior. Only a few candles and a lamp at the bar illuminates the common room. Shadowy faces turn toward you and observe you through the thick smoke. The bartender, a thick-set man in a dirty tunic, is chewing tobacco serenely. Above the bar hangs the skeleton of a large heap lizard on display. Narbo is sitting at a table in the back, his bodyguard half-hidden in the darkness at the wall behind him. Um, do we saunter over? I think we do. The entrepreneur looks out from a stack of papers in front of him and rubs his eyes. Narbo is a corpulent man with bushy dark beard and a few missing teeth. Part of his face is covered in scars similar to those left by old Burns. That, coupled with the withered and mutated left arm that hangs limp at his side, is a clear indication of the taint. We don't know what that is, exactly. The merchant wears a leather jerkin studded with a small bronze and bone coins, a sign of wealth and boldness. His bodyguard, a lean man with tribal tattoos and an outfit made of leather strips, moves his hand calmly to a spear that leans against the wall. Narbo's mouth falls open as the spark of recognition flares up in his eyes. No wonder it's been ten years. Well, fuck, mate, he blinks. I thought you croaked. People, um... Narbo waves his good hand around and looks at his bodyguard. Told tales of your demise. The man finishes his sentence for him as the merchant nods vehemently. That business with the Kanak house in the storm, Narbo adds. Oh boy, it's gonna get, it's gonna get feisty over here with these accents. You tell him that you were indeed at Karnak when the terrible arcane storm struck. You describe the horrors of that night briefly. You add how many of your original comatatus died there. Close friends, old traveling companions, but you walked away unscathed. This was years ago. Sheesh, that fucker Iron Fawns looked for you something fierce, eh? Narbo chuckles heartily, but I'm sure you haven't come back to reminisce about old times, eh? His predatory smile makes you cautious, even though he invites you to sit down with a casual wave of his meaty hand. Speaking of accents, so I'm from New Jersey originally. Um, I generally think I have a mostly non-regional accent. It's pretty hard for people to kind of pin me down to any one particular location. But there's a couple of words, um, particular sounds that really do stand out. Um, and that, in the, the one that has always been at the top of the, the top of that hill for me is Florida Oranges. You got any Florida Oranges? The horror. Oh, it's horrible. Florida Oranges are horrible when they're out of season, I tell you. If you guys have any particular, uh, quirks of an accent, do put it down below in the comments, let me know. Florida Oranges. I get made fun of it all the time. People don't know what I'm talking about here in Germany. They, they're like, what's, what's, what's an orange? What's an orange? Orange. Okay, I'm gonna shut up now. <laughs> well, technically not, but I will at least stop speaking that particular brand of bullshit. Okay, apologize to him for the unfortunate way you parted. Get down to business. Remind him that you don't like threats. Uh, let's just get down to business. You tell Narbo to let bygones be bygones and instead listen to what you've got to offer now. You got some balls coming here, all business and bold. After a tense moment, a stern expression turns into a toothless smile. I like it. I knew he would. I knew he would. The bodyguard visibly became less tense. Narbo opens his arms wide and bows his head. Let's hear it, mate. You breathe in. Time to outline your proposition. Ooh, some choices have dependencies, meaning you can only pick a certain choice if you have the right prerequisites. Perks, companions, resources, journal entries. Some involve tests that you can fail. Perks, characters, and resources can change the chance of success in tests. Represent between a number between 1 and 100. Continue with this event. You explain to Narbo you want to give a discount on shipment of metal scraps, which you would then smuggle into Devon through contacts you have in the city's underworld. Once sold, the profit of the shipment would be quite expensive. You do not name your contact, but divulge enough of her that the plan seems solid. Buyers, you say, are lining up, expecting the shipment soon. Narbo sits in silence, eyes fixed on the table as if listening to some noise from afar. He does not cut you off at any time during your preposition. At length after you're done, he looks up and gives you a weak smile. That sounds like you've been thinking a long time about it, he says as he shifts in his chair. And it's a great plan, except for the part where I give you a discount for you asking and not much else. 
Should I do this? In the, I feel like I, okay, it's gonna be crazy. I don't do that, mate. Oh, this is terrible. That would make me uh, what? Um, an almoner. The bodyguard adds discreetly. I had a word. Narbo looks up at him. When the man nods, he turns back to you. Ah, an almoner. See, I'm the almoner. You gotta do. You know you gotta do better than that. Uh, what you got for me? This is terrible, and I apologize. I should just go back to what I was doing. Tell him that you'll be in his debt. And they can tell you profit as it is, but you'll owe him a favor. Remind him that you two used to make a great team, and this could rekindle that partnership. Now that you're in a bad spot in this last chance, or we could let him know that in exchange for his help, you'll help him out with the problem he might have right now. We don't know that. We can't do it. Or we could just be in his debt. Low chance of success. There's two of these things. Eh. Eh. Go for it. Test success 11 to 32. We used to run together true. I admit it was profitable back then and would have gone on if not for that unfortunate business. Now we're running this shit thoughtfully. All right, I'll help you. But just to be clear, you owe me for this more than just a vague promise of cooperation, and I'll collect. I'll collect right now, in fact. You headed to Devon by way of Avernum, I? When you nod, Narbo leans closer and signals his bodyguard. The man with the dreadlock steps closer and carefully produces a small packet from beneath his leather jerkin, then puts it into the merchant's palm. This here little fella is mighty important to me, see? If you take this out of the city and deliver it to my associate in Avernum, or even, you get your discount scrap from me. The merchant offers you the package. Yavik draws in breath before he could speak. Narvo interrupts him. And before Pretty Boy asks, no, I won't tell you what's in it and don't even think about opening the package. What I can say is it ain't dangerous to itself, but uh, you might want to keep it hidden from the damn militia. A good old crap heat. You take the package. The way Narbo stares at you makes it clear you have no other choice. This might just be the opportunity you hope for. The package is small enough to fit in your palm. It feels very light and is wrapped in fine leather. You pocket it after briefly observing it. You'll be looking for a man named Scornar on Avenum. He ain't to be trifled with either. Just tell him I sent you and you'll be fine. You can find him or his men in Lavinus Watering Hole most of the time. Give this little fella to him and to him only. Understand? I'm all over the place with this guy's accent. He's on drugs, okay? This is what I'm assuming to be the case. Let's just go with that. We don't know what kind of substances they got in this place. It's, there, there's things. There's things, I'm sure. After you assure him, you do. Nabo instructs you to give an hour. Then look for his people at the market and simply introduce yourself. They'll know what price on the metal scraps they should give you by then. He motions to his man. You and Javik stand up and make ready to leave. Reverier will take you back to the back exit. We don't want to give people the idea they can come here to beg for almonds now, do we? Or anyone to connect us and run to the militia, for that matter. You got what you came from, so you leave the right stash through the back entrance and head back to the Comitatus. Oh, your journal. Okay. Uh, you want me to open my journal? Where is that? On the bottom left. It's now active. Open your journal. Click it on the book in the bottom left corner. And there we go. Journal allows you to review. Okay, I think we kind of know what a journal is. Objectives are quests and ongoing stories. Tasks are non-narrative missions and goals you can complete. Qualities can be things, statuses, secrets. Okay, fair enough. We got the package here, deliver it, and the shipment. Buy 24 scrap at the market. Easy peasy. The market pane is now active. Stroll to the market district. Or we can visit the Heap King. That sounds scary. You and Javik roam the dingy market district right below the great heap upon which the Tower of the Heap King is built. Ash-covered awnings and dirty stalls line the labyrinth streets with the stiflingly narrow alleys and tiny squares in between them. Sometimes it's difficult to tell a shop from a dilapidated scrap home, and for a good reason. Most people who live here are also merchants to some extent, and even though the Heap King's militia is there to keep the peace, you can't help but notice all the shifty gaze from the deployal types aimed at you. Take a look at the local prices and goods. Remember a little shop with dwarven curiosities. Perhaps it's still there? Sure. Can't for the life of you find the small shop you visited years ago. Um, okay, so we rolled higher than the number, which means we failed. Interesting. Yeah. We want to take a look at the local prices and goods. Spending an hour looking over the wares, you realize there's nothing but the, there's nothing there you'd fork out coins for. A cupper's working the mad per market managed to get your coins. It could have been worse. Damn. Lost 10 changer. Leave the market. I guess uh, walk up to the tower. Walking up to the, great, to the great heap. 
Walking up the great heap to the immense tower is a daunting task. Up on the hill it is even more difficult to breathe than in the ash-choked city at its feet. A hot wind blows from the south. Every step is slow torture. By the time you reach the gates of the tower, your chest is heaving and you keep coughing up soot. Before you rises the tower of the Heap King, ruler of this trash pile of a town. The whole structure was cobbled together from scrap, with the lower levels covered in metal sheets. A huge bonfire of yellow-white flame burns on its top level day and night, a beacon for the scavenging teams to follow home. Looking nigh impregnable, the fortress has only one entrance. A small group of guards sneer malevolently as you, at you as you approach. Better turn back if you have no business here, Vagabond. The ranking gatekeeper says from under a mask attached to a bronze skullcap. Ask them where you could uh, acquire an invitation, sure. Perhaps you could try licking my arsehole and see where it gets you, one of the guards says out loud. A round of applause and guffaws follow. The ranking guard does not laugh, but does nothing to reprimand them either. My duty is to stop anyone without official business to enter, not to educate them where to get a pass. Okay. Uh... Oh, I see. That's strong. Here's, here's the pain. There's the pain. I need to buy uh, scrap. Two, three, four. That's it. I guess that's all they have. Yes, it is. Could buy coal. Could buy supplies. I mean, we got lots of supplies. I suppose that's fine. Um. So, buy 24 scrap at the market. Did I not do that? Am I out of money or something? No, I have money. How am I supposed to buy 24? I have 24 scrap. Okay, that's all I'm looking for. I feel like... Oh, we can shift click and buy and sell goods. Yeah. And... Additional supplies to have at least 800 units. Right. Um, that was shift click. Holding shift and clicking. So it's a whole stack. I need, I've got what, 700? I need 100. Equipment then you can attach to the Comitatus is sold on some markets or found throughout your travels. They provide bonuses and upgrades. You can switch between the markets of goods and equipment using the buttons over the list of items in the market pane. I can buy an awning if I want. Am I supposed to buy an awning? You want me to buy awnings? Sure. Equipment are in a pool below the Comitatus illustration. Minus 25% consumption for a worker. Okay. Um, I can put it here. Or I can put it here. Items the third time of cargo do not take up cargo space are not equipable. They are used in trade in certain events. When you're done exploring, click on the arch icon to leave. Once you leave, you cannot come back. I mean, I, that's fine, right? We bought an awning. This gives us some bonus that we don't fully understand. Presumably, um, we consume less supplies. Let's go. With all your business here concluded, packed up and restocked on supplies, you finally make ready to leave the decrepit town of Scrap Heap behind in the morning. You spend the night within a guarded compound. It is not for free, though. Second thought, there are still things you wish to explore in Scrap Heap now. Let's spend the money. One lurg. So what is it? Changers? Lurgs? And unknown still. You set out at dawn. Ashes flitting in the sky and the distant mountains rumble ominously in the morning twilight as your comitatus reaches the west gate of the town. Almost immediately, you notice that guardsmen and militia at the gate are working in groups, questioning and inspecting travelers. Move along. Even if they are looking for the package Narva gave you, you realize that there is a minuscule chance of finding it among several departing caravans, all made up of dozens of people, respectively. Besides, the packet is tiny and well hidden at the bottom of a sack of dried mushrooms. A robe magistrate of the Heap King appears to coordinate the search effort, picking out people or whole traveling groups for inspection. As your comitatus draws near, it takes only a passing glance for him to appraise you and your crew before he motions to the guards to let you through. Let's be on our way. The Comitatus is well on its way, and Scrap Heap is a mere dot on the horizon by the time Javik joins you at the front of the line. Just like I said, you made the right choice with this venture. Talk of how you may have saved us all is like spreading like wildfire, he says with a faint smile. Of course, we do have to make it all the way to Devon with the cargo. That's a good start, don't you think? 
there might be some hope. We could say nothing. Uh, there may be some hope left. Well, I'm sure it'll all be fine. It's not like we started with this business yesterday. With that, you go back to your own duties and the constant monitoring of the horizon. If all goes well, you reach the wound in a few days where you can turn south along the edge of the Molten Tongue and travel down to Avernum. Journey continues. Hey, free morale. We take it. Your progress is saved at checkpoints. Whenever you leave a settlement or reach a story at a checkpoint, start of each in-game day saves automatically. Can't save here, but you can in the normal uh, full game. All right. Oh, <laughs> okay. We're well rested. We've got supplies for seven days. MP cost. We've got a lot. I mean, let's just go. Things will happen. The crew management UI is now open. Click on the sheet in the top left to open it. Morale is the general mood. If it drops to one, there's a chance that it dissolves and you lose the game. Don't let that happen. Obedience indicates how satisfied your slaves are. Low obedience leads to theft, runaways, and worse. Be sure to guard your slaves and the fighters and treat your slaves well or punish them insistently, consistently to raise obedience. Nutrition, we get it. That one makes sense. Vigor is how tired we are. So we want to keep everything high. Morale being the most important because you could just lose. Upkeep is how much you owe your crew. You pay them at the end of each day or keep collecting debt. Consumption is how much we consume each day. Yes, running out of supplies. Passengers are people that we have with us. They also consume supplies. So where now? Oh, you can see the number of each crew and beast type you have in your comatatus. Consult the toolkit for each type to learn more about the role. Outriders are special because you need a fighter and a mount to be able to create an outrider by using the plus button. While outriders are excellent fighters, mounts without riders carry cargo. You can always dismount them using the button. Now add an outrider. Hoorah. Then close the window by clicking the right. I mean... We can see, I, I don't want to do that just yet. Scouts can retrieve information. They're decent in a fight. Fighters do fighting. Five riders and outriders combined to efficiently guard your comatatus at the moment. We have such one well, mount. We've got 11 slaves. Function the same as workers, but they have no upkeep and less consumption. We've got workers. We need 15 for the efficient operation. Okay, but that's a combined. That's combined. And we got one beast of burden here. But we can also murder it and eat them. We don't want to do that. All right. Oh, and the wandering old man is here. Carry on. You've run out of movement points and need to camp ending the day. Being on the road all day lowers the vigor of your comatatus that you can replenish by camping. You can also camp earlier than running out of MPs, which helps raise vigor faster. Our vigor is well rested right now, so. Uh, but we're out of movement points, so alas, we must camp. At the end of each in game day, the Comitatus makes camp and settles down for the night. Supplies are consumed and movement points are refreshed after camping. The summary of what happened to your crew that day can be seen on the top right. Okay? We can uh, give more or less supplies. Indeed. Double or normal wages. You can choose to pay all of your debts or accrue payments. You can talk to people and heal them. You can set defense orders for the night. More well-rested crew. Okay. Uh, did I... I guess I just clicked next. Fine. <laughs> All things are signed. We will camp again. Defense orders. No guards posted. I mean... That's bad for morale. I think I'd rather post some guards here the heck are you um your heels get to work nobody i can just talk to people that's no, okay we can pay now we'll pay now after long days march under the bleak skies and harassed by hot wings, the Comatatus finally settles down in a wide ravine. For taking care of camp chores and checking on all your comas, comas, you yourself go to your tent and tuck in for the night. There are benefits to sleeping out in the wasteland. The silence is quite calming, tranquil even. Only the murmur of the distant fire belching mountains, the whisper of the winds, and the occasional groans of your beasts can be heard. Except something is making a muffled noise you don't recognize. Your eyes flip open. There's something wrong. What in Tartarus is it now? You rise and check it out. 
Leaving your tent and passing the sleeping beast, you're just about to call through a guard when you stumble upon a large quadrupedal creature with a fused bone protrusions. It is munching on scattered supplies across the ground, evidently from a torn open sack lying nearby. The creature is a Jakra, a wasteland scavenger that hunts in packs. Before you can utter a word, the monster charges you. Out of the shadows, Mormon leaps at you, tackling it aside, cutting its hide with her bone axe in a follow-up swing. You breathe out, realizing how she has probably saved your life. Javik runs up to you as the creature runs off, letting out a long howl. There's more of those accursed things, boss. They must have sneaked inside the camp past the perimeter guards. We are fighting them and chasing them off, he blurts out. As he does, you can hear yelling in the sounds of a battle from an enemy camp. Around camp. I don't know where I was getting any of those words from. The wounded Jakra is joined by uh, another one from behind a cargo pile, and two of them start to circle you. Time to fight, folks! Companion combat is turn-based. Where one to six enemies fight against your team or one to six companions. You can use the skills of your companions to defeat your enemies, protect your companions, and set yourself up in an advantage position on the board. It's made up of rounds. Yeah, that makes sense. Combat board is divided into two sides. Friendly, yeah. There's a melee row and a back row. Three positions. Begin the fight. The order in which combatants receive their turn is decided by initiative. Okay, we can see up there. It's fine. Um, oh, you got attacked by that thing. Melee skills can only be used from the front row. They can only target front row enemies that are adjacent to the attacker's position or back row enemies if no front row enemy blocks them. Makes sense. Used Maul on Javik. They can move. Um, prevent melee attacks to characters directly behind them, but also makes them more difficult to hit with certain range skills. When you want to move, move Morwen in, in front of Javik to prevent him from... Okay. You want me to move this guy? Move. And click again. Oh, and it's done. Each companion has four combat skills beside move. You can select skills or move by selecting them. Yeah. Use Mind Blast to attack one of your opponents. We got our stats over here. That's interesting. We have Mind Blast. Power of two, mind damage, and incorporeal. What do those do? We don't know. Let's go ahead and mind blast them. That's right. We did two damage. They also have... I don't know what uh, what this is. More in skills includes options to push enemies back and pull enemies to the front. Those some are more complex. You want me to savage kick to send the jack enemy to the back row, denying it an attack. Okay. Savage kick. You've been kicked to the back. It may have made more sense to just kill you, but very well. When you have three hit points left. And consult the combat log, the character sheet, and the forfeit button to pass your current turn. Defeat your enemies. Hold space. Alright, we've also got what here? Hypnosis. Single card moves to where you command it. Interesting. Premonition. We can get initiative, defense bonus, and accuracy. A receding swing if we were in the front. I mean, honestly, it kind of just makes sense for me to kill you. It says power two, but it did four. Then again, you don't have an attack right now. Who's going? Oh, okay. I guess you were going next, and now you're not. Very well. Um, you also got some other things. You can do whiplash. You can pull him forward. We know about the savage kick. Strafe. Adjacent enemies in the same row, then move to the side. Devastating blow. A powerful strike against a single opponent. Wasn't that devastating? Um, I can move you. It costs two power? You have eight out of twelve? Uh, what now? I just missed because I double clicked. I, I don't actually know what happened there. <laughs> and we blocked it. That's right. Um, you can just, I guess, kick him. That's going to be a little bit easier. Deny him the attack. He'll have to move. Indeed. Giving you the option to mind blast. We only have a certain amount of power. Oh, the crit, though. Victory. Easy peasy, folks. Easy peasy. 
Javik steps beside Morwen as they get ready for the fight. Okay, yeah, we know. The two Jakra lie dead at your feet. Morwen wipes the foul-smelling blood from her axe blade as a guard arrives and talks to her. You okay, boss? Javik pats you on the shoulder. You nod, turning to Morwen as she approaches you. All hostels taken care of, she says. They got some of the food, but we could take their meat and parts to make up for it. We could harvest them. We we'll even gain something from this, or we can just go back to bed. Yeah, let's harvest. Two ivory, 90 supplies, and some beast hides. We got some things. Let's just go as far as we can. Your chart is now active. Click on it by opening on the top right corner. Ooh, the chart is your tool to navigating the wastelands of Zarin and planning out journeys. You can move around by the mouse button. Yep. You can mark places, highlight them. Mark uh, a vernum. You've been marked. It's quite far. We we've got we've got quite a, a journey ahead of us here, friends. Quite the journey. Um, I am not camping. We are gonna just keep moving. Forced march allows you to move further than your maximum move points in a given day. They lose vigor and morale. Refrain until we know what we're doing. That that makes a lot of sense. Hold that space bar. We will rest here. We'll stick with the guard. Uh, you could use a little bit of healing. We can treat Javik. Um, treat him using medical. Okay, that uses a single medical supply. Where does it uh, show us our medical supplies? Inventory? That's ivory. This looks like medical. Oh, beast hides. There's all the scrap. I'm not sure. I'm, oh, medical supplies, nine. Very well, okay. We did heal him for two. So I guess you use one medical supply per. Um, and we're, I'm happy with our nutrition. Next day, carry on. As the Comatatus is scaling another stretch of black sand dunes, one of the outriders we had sent out to screen your left flank rides in on the line and heads immediately to you. You can see the man is in a panic right away from the way he hops off the saddle while decelerating and almost falls over. Before he reaches you, your guardsmen are already setting up a defensive perimeter to the east. You beckon the beast drivers to halt the line. Fagris, they are coming! I saw them walking over the dunes! The pilgrims are coming! My god, pilgrims! I met them with their little belt buckles. Um, okay, it's, there, there's scarier things here then <laughs> than what we might consider uh, the American classic pilgrim. Um, a murmur of terror washes over the Comitatus. Clearly your scout was referring to the last pilgrimage. This group of spectral horrors is known to appear out of nowhere and eradicate even large groups of travelers in a matter of minutes. Nobody quite knows what happens to those who encounter them up close as nobody has lived to tell the tale. Some reckless people are reputedly able to take a peek at the otherworldly wayfarers, but during many years as a vagrant, you have never met any such person whose story was credible. You know all too well that if your outrider tells the truth, then you see no reason why he wouldn't. The only chance of survival is for all of you to out... I'm, I'm overwhelmed with emotion. The only chance of survival is for all of you to run or to hide. Let's try and hide. Outriders, you had sent westward report there's a rocky area not far away. After heading west for a quarter of an hour in great haste, the Comitatus finds a stretch of badlands crisscrossed by shallow ravines. The jagged rock formations here are half covered in the fine black sand of Arenas Negras. Already the scouts are busy setting up hiding places among the rocks and gullies. In a matter of minutes, they are all behind cover. Everyone settles down and either prays to whatever gods they believe in or prepares for a desperate last stand. But what about you? Perhaps there's a chance now to take a look at the last pilgrimage from up close. No, surely it would be insane to attempt such a thing. Or would it? As you are pondering this, the wind picks up from the northeast, carrying with the clouds of black dust, the perfect cover for spying. There's still time before the storm hits with the brunt of its force. Um, you know, we're going to creep out among the dunes. Takes about 10 minutes. We're going for it. Takes about 10 minutes for this feeling of what you're doing is utter madness to settle in. By then, you and a scout are creeping forward in the dust storm. Going is tough despite wearing hoods and scarves to protect your faces and eyes, but you make it to the dunes through which the pilgrimage is expected to move. After 10 more aggravating minutes, a dull light appears over the dunes to your left. As it gets closer, it is revealed to be a blanket of white-yellow radiance that covers a shambling assembly of sickly figures. 
They cross the dunes not fifty yards from where you're hiding, but due to the awful dust and the eerie light, you cannot make out much. I'm getting closer to the mic, and I know you're up there, but that's what's happening, because we're gonna... Anyways, okay, okay, shh. They cross the dunes not fifty yards, here we go, from where you're hiding, but due to the awful dust and the eerie light, you cannot make out much. They appear to be men of sorts, or at least humanoid, wearing long robes that remind you of old depictions of pre-calamity clergy. Some of them lean on staves. A faint chanting is on the wind, and both of you are struck by a weird sensation, as if someone walked over your grave. Strange images infringe upon your peripheral visions, elusive and unformed. The otherworldly congregation passes in what feels like hours, yet only minutes have passed, and takes the dust storm with them. Warily you walk back to the rest of your people. Some people talk of strange images passing before their eyes, like waking dreams while the pilgrimage was close by. The comitatus ponderously digs itself out of the black sand and dirt. You are ready to depart in half an hour. Most of your comas are hushed to keep an eye on the horizon and on you for days to come. The sooner we leave, the better. We lost morale. We lost some movement. Okay, not bad. I guess we camp here. Uh, what if I pay you now? Are you, are you happy about that? Does that make you happy? Uh, I mean, I'll just pay it. We could give more rations? No. Defense orders, double pay. That would boost up our morale quite a bit. It doesn't actually do anything bad. But distressed is not nice either. Let's double them for a day. I'm a generous leader. We'll probably starve to death out here because of my generosity. But nonetheless, we're going for it. Steady morale, folks. Steady morale. Of course, we will just go back to normal now. And continue onward. Um, the Comatatus climbs the last black dune and comes to a halt on your mark. Standing in one of the carts, you spy the horizon carefully before hopping down and convening with your most trusted. Ahead looms the voiceless lake, a place of deathly quiet and utter peril. The lava flow of this particular tendril of the molten tongue cools down here below a tough shell of dark rock. Covered by streaming water, yet the shell is not solid enough in places. It can crack in the blink of an eye and open under one's foot, leading to a sudden, scalding death. There are ways to guess where it's safe to cross the terrain, but it has to be done slowly and attentively. Your scouts know their way around here, but because the lava changes constantly beneath the shell, they have to rely on finding a new way through each time. The lake is voiceless because everyone has to keep completely quiet. That way, one might hear the shifting lava and the cracking shell just in time. Your lieutenants agree that crossing the far side of the shell is still better than going around and into Arenas Negras, which we talked about, but we don't know what it is. The Desert of the Black Sands. Yeah, that probably won't stay out of the desert. I mean, this is quite hostile too, but I guess, especially after coming so close to the last pilgrimage a few days ago, nobody in their right mind would go near the damn place. So you're stuck with the plateau surrounding the voiceless lake. Now, we didn't actually read deep into the last pilgrimage. The thing is, like, there's a lot of reading. So I'm going to put this out there for you folks. How deep of a level of reading should I go? Am I already reading too much, in your opinion? Tell me. I don't know. I mean, if enough people voice a particular way or the other, I might listen to it. Um, we'll see. No, no guarantees, to be honest. But uh, still, I'm interested. And I will take it under an advisement, at least. Um, if you want me to read more, also tell me that. Oh, yeah, okay, sounds fair. Especially after coming so close, yeah, we're stuck. I guess we're just going to do it. And we succeeded barely, going step by step, carefully listening to any telltale sounds. While sweating profusely, every member of the comatatus manages to make it through. Ah, for hours felt like days turn away and southwards from the accursed lake. The crew becomes agitated as you leave the perilous plateau behind, even joking among themselves about the constipated sounds back there. You leave the voiceless lake behind. Hey, plus one morale. All right. All right, we take it. Oh. Just as we were about to leave that damnable lake behind, we heard it. An abominable shriek pierced the air and made us gasp. It came from behind some hills nearby. Coupled with the ruckus of battle, the armed women and men of the Comitatus looked at their marvelous questioningly. 
Scouts come to running toward the cart line as you're about to enter the Badlands south of the lake and hear what can only be described as a paralyzing howl, accompanied by the unmistakable clash of weapons. There's a battle going on, Vagris, just beyond yonder hills, the scout points out. These some armed folk are being attacked by bloody undead. A murmur washes over the crew and many of them ready their weapons. Not to give aid to fellow travelers in dire need is believed to attract dire peril onto yourself. Besides, it would be better to fight the undead together than alone if it comes to that. The tension is rising with each passing moment, with everyone watching you, waiting for you to give the order. Um, <laughs> Let's blindly rush in. You, get there, you might get there in time to save some people. Plus one morale. Nice. We're keen. We're keen. Can I look at it now? No. Probably gives us a bonus, though, I think. You clamber over the next few hills and happen upon the site of a brutal melee. Bodies are strewn across the field, most of them mutilated undead, but some are mangled and burnt, humans in dark clothes. Another such man, a robe priest with a shaved head, falls to the ground after flying half a dozen yards, following a bone-crunching hit from a looming white giant. The creature looks like it's made up of several bodies, fused together by some combination of natural disaster and evil curse. The rest of the Shamblers look like the look like they are smoldering. The great white abomination engages the last two men standing. A white faced, lightly armored enforcer with a shield and a tall man in elaborate black armor wielding a greatsword. Both of them look the worst for wear. There's no time to lose. You and yours rush to the aid of the two men. And a fight commences. Ho! Oh! Okay, we can deploy our companions. Right? So we have to pick. In this fight, some allies are already deployed and you'll take control of them, but you cannot change their deployment. Morwen is useful in the front row, while Javik's abilities favor the back. Okay. Yeah, Javik, you can go there. Morwen, you go in the front. I don't know anything about you guys. Oh, you're already there. Load it up. What the hell are you? Oh, with the crit. The body slam crit. You just killed him. Holy crap! Some skills can target friendliness to support, protect, or even hear them. In this fight, a lot of Javik skills cannot be used because undead enemies are immune to mind-affecting effects. Javik is far from useless because we can buff everyone. I guess I will buff you. I did that. He just died. Combat is cruel. Yeah, evade allows you to completely avoid attack. Block blocks provides. So successful block provides extra arm against attack, mitigating more damage. And you can go into defense mode. Evade and block chance. Certain skills are better against one or the other. Shield or dodging. You often have to change these by clicking the defense mode icon. Um, no. Ah, defense mode icon. You're in defense mode. I mean, I think I just want you to, to try and murder these little dudes. You didn't murder the little dude. I keep looking at this as being their hit points, and that's not right. Sedaris is a very tough companion due to his armor and good defense. He's got a support skill that enhances a stat, vengeance, and one that debilitates an enemy for several rounds. Cleave... Affects multiple targets. Okay, I mean... Bane. Lose the accuracy? Yeah, that sounds pretty good. I kind of want to make you lose some accuracy there, friend. I am your Bane! Yep. I can't believe they just straight up murdered this one guy. Many of your leadership perks allows you to use resourcefulness in various ways in combat. Okay. Whatever you have unlocked can be found in the leader medallion and from buttons along the menu button. Three lines icon. Nope. Nope. <laughs> um, what are you talking about? Consult their tooltip to learn. You have two options for now. Aid. It allows you to revive down companions and inspire. Okay, so we that guy was meant to die. Use Inspire to give a character additional defense. I don't, uh... That changes the defense. I don't quite know where you're talking about. Oh, here. 
Okay. I will boost your defense? What just happened here? Can I not do it to you? Am I doing it? Am I doing it wrong? <laughs> Where, crap, where's my tutorial? Okay. Have I inspired? I mean, I don't uh, see that I have used it. I did. I did inspire. Okay. Um, now I think we're going to go in, what, for the cleave here? Let's try and kill the weak guys. That was not right. Did I use the wrong ability? I might have. Uh, Mind Blast doesn't work on any of these guys, though. Does it? I don't think so. So we're going to buff you. And now you can just use your normal attack. You can also just... Um, yeah, let's strafe, actually. Okay. Okay, getting there. She gets hit, unfortunate. Um, I would have liked to revive my guy instead of just using all of my points. <laughs> Ow! Yeah. You're basically dead. Can you flee? Or you're just gonna die. <laughs> I think she's just gonna die. Okay. Um, I wanted to do cleave here. Except you've missed. Your buff gives evade. Does it stack? That's the question. He blocks you completely. Great. You're gonna flail. Nice. No damage done. She's downed. Okay. Losing all the vitality. They're not removed from combat, but cannot perform actions. Enemies can still target them, and if they lose all their downed vitality. Okay. Be sure to protect them as much as we can. Uh, <laughs> right. I will just give you more... Dodge? <laughs> and just hope that we can... Kill it. You're not cleaving, though. I thought you would be cleaving. You're not. No! Leave her alone. Um, you're not actually cleaving here. I will drop your accuracy again. Does it stack? It doesn't look like it stacks. Can you actually not hurt these guys? You can't. Nice! You dodged somehow. <laughs> you as well. All right. The cleave doesn't really seem to do anything. I will just buff you again. Cleave doesn't seem to do anything. For whatever reason, try strike two adjacent enemies in the front row. Well, now we just kill you. Can you not hit him because he's down there? That's not great. Wow, you blocked all of my hits. This is an incredibly difficult fight. <laughs> yeah, you're probably going to kill her. You have a buff? I used all of my, my resourcefulness points by accident before, and this has caused a lot of problems. I can't move her. I can move her. I can't move her. So you're just going to keep doing this one buff, and you, meanwhile, can't hurt this guy, and you're just going to murder her. And I can't move her. It's a bit unfortunate. Yeah, there goes Morwen. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye, Morwen. <laughs> it's nice to know you. I mean... 
You just stand here and buff him, I suppose? Uh, that's good that you're- I, I mean, it's not good. At least I can kill you now. I can't hurt anybody, though. At least you're dead. It's just me and this guy now. Um, but you just pass your turn. And now we just slowly uh, beat you down. Two of my party members have fallen. Ow! Potentially three. I'm actually going to move you to the front and maybe you get attacked. 13 out of 28. He's got more hit points than we do. Yeah, okay. See the flail? Could have done more. You can give yourself a... Uh, no, give him the buff. Slowly try and beat you down. We've missed. Okay, nice. The evasion is clutch. You're way the hell back there now. A crit for two? Okay, if you say so. I guess it would have probably not done anything. Ow. Uh, you now need to move back here. <laughs> and please, slowly murder this guy. If he kills you, we're screwed. The crit for seven, please don't kill me. We're moving him back up. We're moving him back up. Yes! You're downed. But we did it. You're down, but we did it. That was a damn hard fight. Wow. It is over. The undead finally stopped moving, their bodies lying mutilated all around the hills. The large abomination was hacked to pieces, now only a jumbled pile of ash and petrified bones. Some of your crew also got torn up. There were several wounded and one dead, his head torn off after he had been overpowered. The man in the black armor survived the battle. He is sitting on a rock nearby, covered in ash from the abomination, drinking ponderously from a water skin while he is observing the battlefield. His grim gaze wanders from one sane companion to the other, as if wanting to make sure all of them are dead. At length, his piercing eyes find you, and a chill runs down your spine. There's no doubt in your mind that the man and you need to talk. Let's go. Minus one fighter. Standing in front of the man, you offer him your hand. The man looks you up and down in a fashion that suggests only a dash of contempt. We'll take a dash. His greatsword, forge of steels across his lap. He does not take your hand. You seem to be this leader of this... The man is looking for the word as he eyes the comitatus. Company of travelers. What is your business here? The bluntness of the question, coupled with the man's apparent hostility and ungratefulness, hits you, leaving you speechless. Perhaps it is for the best. You notice that the man is bearing the symbol of Sagarod, which would make you cautious. Sagarod being the god of vengeance, anger, malevolence, and curses. Oh, god damn. Tell me you're... A traveling company. Traveling south, I presume. So you're turning up here is a matter of utter coincidence, I take. When you assure him it is, he narrows his eyes and pierces you with his gaze. There's a tense moment that seems to take forever. You are truthful, Vagris. Commendable. The man rises from the rock. He towers over you now, and it dawns on you that such a war gear in the metal star world makes him either a very rich or very powerful person. Or both. I'm grateful for your assistance in this skirmish, late as it was. The man turns to look at Javik, who appears at your side, and bows his head to the man. Without acknowledging your friend or his greeting, the armored man turns to you again. My name is Sidarius. I am a knight of Ordis Negrosolis, which is Order of the Black Sun. Of course it is. First and foremost, the knightly order of the Empire, and one of the religious orders called the Pillars of the Empire. Wow. Hardcore. By aiding me, Vagras, you have aided Imperial Law. You clearly have some questions of your own. Now is your chance to ask them. Best not to make him wait. Ask him uh, about the fight. My company was drawn here with the false promise of finding the hideout of enemies of the Empire. Instead, a large group of undead surrounded us, clearly drawn here by some wild means of our enemies. And we had to fight for our lives. You arrived towards the end of a drawn-out battle and saw my last companions fall. We fought with Sagarod's rage and with the Emperor in our hearts, but there were just too many of the Shamblers. Looking around, you now realize how savage the confrontation must have been. Dozens and dozens of undead lie all around the field and only half a dozen of Sidarius' dead companions. What was he doing here? Well, we already know that. 
That's about as knightly order. The Order of the Black Sun is one of the Fulcumus Imperium, as you know. We are adherents of Sagarad and Ashkul. Askul. Askul? Askul. We are one of the best of the best and forces of the Empire, hunting down criminals and traitors, guarding our great leaders, and leading military operations. This hunt was also one such task which we typically undertake. It's clear to you from the way he speaks of the Knightly Order that Sedarius is early dedicated to it. Nah, I guess I have to ask him everything. What are you doing here? I already know. Yeah. It's not my assumption that we've been betrayed and a trap is set. I mean, this, this is no new information. You've been an instrument of the divine sent here by Sarah himself to aid me. What plans now? I intend to return to Avernum, where we set out from. I have to debrief my superiors there of what happened today. And I also want to look into the tip we received that led us here. Sidarius fixes you with his gaze. Your destination does not happen to be Avernum, does it? You can't help but tell him the truth. You are too well aware that lying to one of the Knights of the Black Sun is high treason. It's the first time you see Sidarius's malevolent smile. Good. I shall join you for the journey. Erafons teaches us to share the burdens of the road. Now tell your men to pile the bodies of my companions. Burning them without the proper rituals is not becoming such heroes of the Empire, but we have no time for such else. Also gather all their belongings while you're at it. Make it happen, Fagris. In the meantime, someone skillful enough to take a look at my wounds. You're about to make the necessary arrangements, and Sidarius calls after you. And just to let everyone know, the danger might still be looming over us. The traitors who we were supposed to find and set the traps must still be around here, keeping a distance. They surely would have finished me off when I had slain all the undead. I doubt they are going to make a move now, but who knows what their desperation will drive them to do. Though your crew does not like to be brought around by a stranger, they too agree that the slain should be dealt with. The pile is burning and the cart line is ready to leave in an hour. It seems he's coming with us. He joins us. As the Comitatus is crossing into the Badlands, you climb up into the cart where the resting Sedarius is sitting in the back. You can see that he's holding something small in his hands, observing it attentively. He looks up, sensing you watching him. This is a fetish charm, one of the kindly sisters and the disciples of Askul used to attract the reanimated dead. The knight tosses you a small bone charm, complete with arcane writing in black ink and attached teeth. I disabled it, do not worry. These filthy traitors may have used the stolen charm to ensnare my contingent, but I am anointed in the faith of Askul. I swear they will suffer for this atrocity. You give the charm back to the knight. There is also the matter of the belongings of my fallen comrades. I expect you to hold on to them until we reach Avernum. We'll discuss them there. You nod and turn to the horizons. Whether you like it or not, you are bound to him for the next few days. Plus one Sagarite arms. And end. The Dark Knight joined us out and rescued him from the clutches of the mindless Tell the deal. that slaughtered his companions. He was a grim sort, displaying no gratitude or companionship. Yet we were stuck with him, for a lawman such as the knight could make his dreadful will ours by command. So we set out, bound for Avernum, the greatest city in the vicinity. All right, I've also realized far too late that my camera would likely be better suited in this location, as uh, there is useful information up in the top left. Um, leader management is now active. Click on the medallion to open the leader window. Ooh, whoa, we got stats, ladies and gentlemen. I love putting points into things. This is very exciting. Okay. Current insight is displayed in the top right. Insight is gained mainly through events and can be used to purchase perks and other improvements. Abilities that have levels and used in various situations. Okay, tributes and professions are used in events. You can purchase any number of perks if your insight allows you to by clicking on the empty nodes. Select and purchase the prepare leadership perk now. Prepare leadership perk. What does it do? You can use resourcefulness to place a companion to the front of the initiative order in combat. That's pretty useful. Done. Leadership perks are perks specific to the Vagris. Each of them lets you use resourcefulness to boost your action a certain way when unlocked. Yeah, we know about resourcefulness, though we use it quite poorly. Each day it replenishes. All right, we can raise its maximum. Authority is the maximum number of deputies you can have at any time. You need no additional authority in Pilgrims of the Wasteland. Click on the helmet icon in the leader medallion to navigate to the companions page. The companion page allows you to yeah, manage your companions. They got stats, combat skills, scroll icon. You want me to uh, click the arrow icon next to the companion name to display Morwen. 
Because she got jacked up, didn't she? How is she? Does she have mortally wounded? Oh, yeah. How do I fix that? <laughs> um, oh, there you can put gear on them. It's shared among all companions, but only one of them can wear a piece at any given time. You want me to equip her with the luck talisman? Where's the list of gear? I have to uh, drag it and drop it probably here and then click on the laurels at the top of her image oh she got stats too see this is what I'm talking about this is the promise window where you can upgrade your companions general power level of companion from one to nine each unlocked level gives the companion amount of proficiency points raising prowess costs insight from the leader interesting click on the next prowess node and confirm to unlock it Additionally, the third, sixth, and ninth level prowess can only be unlocked after certain storyline missions. Perks and descriptions can be observed. Yeah, okay. Upgrading works the same way. Be very careful what you spend proficiency on. Once purchased, perks cannot be changed. Upgrade one of your companions', companions prowess and purchase any perks or skills you like. Who are the companions we have? Sidarius, Javik. I mean, I can do things with Javik. I can make Mind Blast uh, better. How do I do this? <laughs> um... Racing prowess costs inset from the leader. Click on the next prowess node. So if I want to do it to Javik, I would do it here. Revert. Does this uh, actually boost things? They gain proficiency points, which then you can spend. So I can do it with him. Will I do it with him? I mean, he kind of just got wrecked, didn't he? Or he didn't do anything. That's the problem. He just won't do anything. I'll do it to you. Now we can say... Um, I wish I had actually done it with the other person. We can give you better navigation. Hunting. Mighty. More physical strength if I just want to, to boost your physical strength. Presumably this does more damage. I can also make your actual attacks do more. We don't have the proficiency points or I am unable to do it for other reasons. Perhaps might. It does not seem to give me... Uh, why would I not be able to boost this? Cost for proficiency. Maybe it has a required level or something. I will just make you mighty. How about that? You're super mighty now. Um, and we can boost your survival. Sure. We have one more point. Skulker. Eh. I don't know if I care about savvy or dexterous. Strong-minded. Willpower and determination. Don't really know what these things do. I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy here. And uh, there you have it. And we're actually going to put a cut here. We've played now for a little bit over an hour, hour and 15 minutes almost, which is much longer than my typical episodes. So we're, I'm doing a little bit of a different thing. I, I'm playing a bunch of different games right now, making about hour long episodes for each. And then I'm putting them out to you. Which do you guys want to see is uh, more of? Um, I'm going to play all of them. Right now it's between um, Uratak, Monster Train, and this game. They're all going to be played at least weekly. Um, but the question is, which one will take up the bulk? I mean, I think we're going to be doing all of them. So let me know if you liked what you see. Do hit the like button if you want to see more of this. Hit the like button. Let me know down below in the comments as well. Also, just generally, the like button is the best way to just let the algorithm know that you're enjoying what you're seeing here and kind of help get the word out. So I'd appreciate that greatly as well. Um, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell if you did like and enjoy what you experienced here today. I had a great time with this game. I'm really excited. It seems like it's got a lot of depth to it. A lot of story, a lot of lore. Um, lots of decisions which I'm all about so we're definitely going to be getting further into the game and again I'm putting it up to you to kind of help me decide you know test the waters a little bit and uh, see where I should really focus my energies because it matters to me it matters to me you know so let me know and, and uh, as well as all that down below you can also find a link to the game which is 
being crowdfunded right now. I think on Fig, you'll find a link down below um, that does get you access to the game if you crowdfund it. There's also a demo coming out quite soon, um, I think on Steam. And uh, as well as for me, you can find links to my Patreon if you want to support the channel and get some perks. You can find a link to the Discord if you want to talk and chat and hang out, um, as well as to my Twitch channel. And that's all the time that we have here. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Until next time, my name is Man the Maker. Take care, everybody. Have a wonderful day.